How good was it just to have a response like that coming off of Thursday's game? It was good. I mean, we knew what we needed to do um, tonight. We know how we need to, to play going forward. And I think sometimes it's unfortunate that it happens, but it's good to have those types of games because um, you realize there's a lot of stuff you need to get better at, and you realize there's a lot of stuff we can improve on internally, even though we've been winning games and, and, and beating good teams. There's always another level I think we can get to, and I think that was um, a good wake-up call for us. You could just tell Z was locked in from opening tip tonight. What did you think about his focus throughout that game? Well, he was sharp. He was aggressive. He was, he was very assertive. He was locked in, and I think he's um, doing a great job of, of responding well to a lot of criticism around him. What do you think just just hearing the, the amount of criticism that he's received the past few days and just kind of the nature of when he becomes the topic of discussion and when people talk about him? Yeah, I mean, he's he's the topic of a lot of discussion consistently, I think, throughout his career. And I think that's a sign of his greatness, right? You know, they don't really talk about players that aren't good. They don't talk about players that, that aren't um, MVP caliber, or all NBA caliber, or Austin caliber. If he was just another guy, no one would really care. And I think that's a sign of you know his greatness. And I think for him, it's just about understanding what he needs to accomplish, understanding what he wants to accomplish, not only this season but throughout his career, and then locking in and, and really focusing on that. His talent is his talent. Um, he's going to be great most nights. And I think it's just about consistently stacking the days and consistently doing um, the little things um, each day. And I think he's heading in a good direction. And tonight was just the second time you, B.I., and Z all scored 20 in the same game, just, just hearing that, you know, what do you think? And just how much does it show us how much y'all still have ahead of y'all, you know, yeah. even though y'all spent this much time together? I mean, we only played, what, 11 games together this year? So two out of 11. <laughs> so, I mean, I think it's, it's situational. Some nights it's going to happen, some nights it's not. But I think it's just more about um, the type of looks we're getting, um, the pace we're playing with. Are we defending? Are they rebounding? Am I helping out on the rebounds? Are we taking care of the ball? I think those are the things that are really going to matter. We can make shots. That's not like that's not really the issue. The issue is the other stuff. Are we doing that at a high level and giving ourselves a chance to win? So I think there will be more nights like this, especially if, if Big Fella's going to get 25 or 30 points in the paint. Is he's going to be able to kind of control the game. B.I.'s going to get to his spots. Uh, if we can put pressure on the rim, if we can get out and run in transition and uh, continue to, to drive and kick, and there'll be quality looks for everybody. And when you have a game like you had on Thursday, what do you, what's the most important thing for a team to kind of respond in the right way and, and kind of take it and use it in a way that you can kind of turn it into a positive and come out better afterwards? It starts with accountability. You know, there's, there's stuff we can all do better. We didn't lose because of Z. Like We lost because we didn't play well collectively as a team, and that's, that's on all of us. That's on me too. So. Uh, I think it was just about accountability. Having time to actually practice helps. Whether you win or lose, it's nice to be able to like get real practice in where you can actually do contact, you can work on sets, you can work on flow, you can work on defensive principles. Um, so us having some practices, you know, competitive practices is always helpful. And then just being able to watch film and figure out how we can get better, I think is the key to, to bouncing back from big wins and big losses. CJ, when you, going back to the criticism of Zion, did you, did you give a message to him or you just kind of I talked to him, but I'm not going to share. Yeah, but he knows what he needs to do. It's, it's, you've seen the response tonight. Hopefully we can continue to play well as a team. Um, and no, before that game, he was playing really good basketball. So I think for us, it's about stacking good days, man, collectively. we got to stack good days. we got to have good practices. we got to have good walkthroughs if there's no practice. And those are the signs of you know winning teams, and that's how you build winning habits. Um, those days where we got 30 minutes or 40 minutes, whatever it is, we got to be really, really intentional about what we're trying to accomplish so that we can stack wins um, when you guys are watching and when the fans are watching. I believe on your pod you spoke about the importance of trust and the way trust is on the basketball. What's board. the name of that podcast? I let you I uh, I know you s yes, that's the name, C.J. McCollum. Yes, that's C.J. McCollum podcast for those that haven't subscribed. For sure. Um, but you spoke about the importance of trust, and tonight you got a block, and you put it in a transition. You gave it up to Trey, I believe, and Trey uh, skipped it to Najee, and Najee swung it back to you. And I think about that play in, in mm -hmm. regards to trust. Um, I don't know if this play happens you know, last year, but now it seems like this team is building that, that trust. Can you kind of speak to that growth? Yeah, I think it's communication. I missed Trey in the first half. I drove. I had a right hand layup, and I air balls the layup. And uh, I see the look on his face. And I said, "Bro, you can just tell me I missed you, bro. Like I'm not, I'm not that guy. Like tell me I missed you." And he was like, "You missed me." I said, "Thank you." And then the next time I found him, I was like, "Yo, I'm gonna, I'm gonna make mistakes, but we gotta hold each other accountable and 
you know, and understand that. Like, we all just trying to win at the end of the day. Like, we want to do what's necessary to win. And I think for us it's about, like you said, just trusting and, and just playing hard. Like, understanding that there's going to be mistakes that are made, but if they're good mistakes, like, in good gesture, you're playing hard, you're trying to get back, you're scrambling, things are going to happen. And I think on that play, I seen him early, and I was like, all right, let me try to get him a three. He kind of bobbled it. He looked, and he was like, he threw it back. And I was like, ah, no, nah, I don't got nothing. So I swung it. I think I swung it to Herb. Herb threw it back to me, and I hit a three. But it was just like one of us was going to get a shot. It's just a matter of who takes it, and I think that's the that's the way the game should be played. You play fast, you make a decision, and you live with the decision that you make. Do you see a, like a big picture significance, and this is just one not to belabor Zion, but in him uh, coming back from that last game and getting a season high against the team with the best record in the league and a rim protector like Rudy Gobert, what is what do you think? He should take from that. <laughs> he's, he's dominant. He's very dominant. He's a good finisher around the basket. When he puts pressure on the rim, he's virtually unstoppable. When he gets to the free throw line, it makes the game easier for all of us because then they can't really touch you on the perimeter. He's got great gravity. Uh, I mean, you've seen this for however long he's played. Um, this is probably the best version of him. You know, add a jumper, add a couple of those things, and I don't know what else. what else can he – add to his game like you know what I mean what is he 14 of 18 or 13 of 17 two of the layups rimmed out that's a 15 to 17 game on tough finishes over the best block shot blocking big in the uh, NBA multiple um defensive player of the year right like this is the number one defense in the NBA so I don't I mean uh, does it get harder than that like I don't know <laughs> Yeah, I like the pace. I like the ability for us to switch. We just got to take care of the ball a little bit better, rebound, secure the rebounds, and then get out and run. But uh, when you have you know space and pace, it's really hard to to guard you. You look at a lot of teams across the league that you know are, are playing a little smaller. When you got shooting out there, when you got guys that can make quick decisions, and you also got like sized wings who are long, athletic, and, th and can defend, it makes the game very difficult for the other team because it's 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 hard to play on offense against a team that's switching everything. And then they can get out and run your, on your misses, and they got a lot of different weapons. And it makes it very difficult on the other team. All right, thanks, Have a good one.